This episode is going to be called Thank You, God. If you guys don't know, I believe in God very, very much. My goal is to serve him. I feel as though he communicates internally to us. It's not like you have to go to a pastor or a priest or, you know, a bishop or any of that type of stuff, a reverend, whatever you want to call the medium between you and God. I don't feel like you need that. I believe you can just pray to God yourself and he will communicate with you in a special way that you would understand. I feel as though science Science is the study of God's creations. You know, if you got biology, study of life, geology, the study of rocks, astrology, the study of stars. And I feel like science is the study of God's creations. I believe in science because I believe in God. And so when I look at accounting or anything in the money field, I also understand that money is not one of God's creations. That's a man-made tool to be able to transact. And so to me, you can't serve God and money. And so me studying money, I also try to make sure I'm not spending too much time, energy on money because I don't want to take away from me serving God to serve money. I feel as though a lot of people, in order to make money, they do things that, you know, the God in them tells them not to do. They spend their most quality hours chasing money. They waste their health chasing money. And a lot of them sacrifice their families trying to chase money. There's a book called Thank God for Bitcoin by Jimmy Song, where he talks in depthly about these types of concepts. And I agree with him. I also did a podcast episode with him where we talk about these things. And I agree. You can't serve both God and money. And so I pray for those types of people because we should be following God. And then through God, God will provide. Even the Bible talks about like you don't have to save for tomorrow as much because God will provide. That doesn't mean not to save. It just means not to completely worry about it. Don't sacrifice your health, your family, too much of your time, too much of your energy, because at the end of the day, those should be used to bring people into the kingdom of God. I feel like we should fear God and nothing else, meaning we should not fear money to the point where we're doing things that are conflicting with God. No, I'd rather be in tune with God and be at conflict with the money because at the end of the day, he's going to provide for us. I also believe in Jesus Christ. I feel as though, you know, he came down here. He was a perfect example of how we're supposed to live. Uh, Like when you look at Jesus's life in the Bible, whether Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, he mainly did like three things. He came here to feed people, heal people and teach people. And the powers that be, the powerful people hated it. And they tried to Um, get him to mess up they tried to get him arrested they tried to kill him but it wasn't to one of his own friends one of his inner circle people that sold him out for some money once again there's that money concept you can't serve god and money uh you can't make those types of sacrifices and judas basically turned him in and he was assassinated and so you know in a spiritual realm that saved us from our sins because he was perfect on a physical world level you can't serve god and money I thank God for the blessings that he's given us, the time that we've been on this earth, the ability to hear this podcast, the ability for me to be able to speak and create the podcast, the ideas that are going on in my head to be able to verbalize them. I just thank God for all of those things. I strive to focus on my purpose the way that Jesus did. Um, My purpose to me is to be able to educate you guys on finances, because in Revelation, when it talks about the mark of the beast, I personally feel as though that the central bank digital currency that's coming out is a first step to the mark of the beast. There are videos on Instagram and YouTube and all over the place now where you have people that are using chips embedded in their hands to be able to purchase things. And right now that seems kind of cool. However, when you look at the long term, if everybody's using one currency, a central bank digital currency or like the World Bank president, AJ Bango was talking about having a one worldwide digital currency at that point, that revelation verse makes more sense in the sense that people or a government can now control everybody's transactions. To me, it's only a matter of time before they say, well, you have to have some type of mark. I feel as though the central bank digital currency is the first step to that. And so my purpose is to be able to educate you guys on that as much as humanly possible. So Even through all these episodes where it talks about my different life events and the different experiences I've lived through, I will always try to bring it back towards my purpose, whether central bank digital currencies, educating you guys on Bitcoin, which I believe to be the escape from the central bank digital currency. And so I'm going to read you a passage from Revelation 13, the New Living Translation. Um, It says he, meaning the beast, required everyone, small and great 
rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead, and no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Wisdom is needed here. Let the one with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. So I don't know anything about 666. I don't know the numbers and foreheads and right hands and any of that. I just know that Bitcoin takes you away from the system that could be controlled by a central authority or a central bank or having one world currency. And so I'm using the best of my wisdom here in 2023, 2024 to say, hey, learn about Bitcoin so you can escape that potential system. Because if you can accumulate enough Bitcoin now, you may never need to use that system because it's not controlled by any one entity, one government, one person, one business, none of that. And so I try to live my purpose, which is educating y'all. And I thoroughly believe that if you are living in your purpose and you are living with faith and not just by sight, then God's going to make sure you're good. You've got a place in heaven built out for you. You know, it's not just about following the letter of the law. It's about surrendering yourself to God's purpose and using your God-given gifts to be able to bring people into his kingdom, as well as to promote love, peace, things of that nature, harmony, not strife, chaos, and fighting. That's not godlike. So my goal is to be able to educate you guys on Bitcoin, escape the CBDC, and understand that me loving God doesn't always mean that I love church. I'm not religious. And even when you look at Jesus' life, he had problems with the church. He entered the temple and drove out all the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. And he said, my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. So he had his problems with the church as well. But we're still supposed to congregate for fellowship, meals and prayers. But we as believers, I believe that we are the church and that we should be doing these things everywhere we go not just religiously one day and acting better than those who don't come into a physical building called church. We should just be congregating with one another and having fellowship with one another, talking about our problems, talking about things that can be improved. Even the apostles, they didn't always agree and they've gone their separate ways. The goal is just to be able to bring people into the kingdom of God and to bring love into this world. And so it's just one of those things where it's like, if you read the Bible, you'll really understand that it's not about religion. Jesus didn't even like religion. It's about the relationship with God. It's about living through that and not about trying to chase money or trying to be completely religious. Just have faith in God. And so that's why I thank him. I'm able to breathe. I thank him for my family. I thank him for my health. I thank him for the monetary uh, components that I have. I thank him for my business. And I continue to try to live through him every single day. Try to be an example, but more than anything, just trying to live right according to, to his principles. Not perfect at all. I ask forgiveness regularly, but to me, living through your purpose, not serving um, money and to pursue your purpose. I think those are the realest things in the world. So CJ, the smart guy, I just want to say thank you, God. And yeah, welcome to my podcast. Deuce.